book here from the Library of Congress that contains the will of James Finney Baxter, where he mandates that the city of Boston build a New England pantheon to commemorate the principles and achievements of the pioneers whose ideals were the seed of free government. He was concerned at that time in 1920 that the Pilgrims and Puritans had been misunderstood, misrepresented, and that he was establishing this pantheon to be sure that their intent, their heart, their spirit, and their ideals would be understood so that the founding of this country could be something of, of inspiration to all of humanity, not something shrouded in misconception and misunderstanding. We have reached a period when our high hopes for the future welfare of this country may fail of fruition. If those ideals are not immutable, an ideal like all men, all people are created equal. If that is an eternal verity, then we should honor it and respect it in all people. However, if it is not, then you can manipulate what that means until it means nothing. In the evolution of American democracy, there have been two great syntheses. One happened here in Plymouth, Massachusetts, in the first 50 years of peace and friendship between the Mayflower Pilgrims and the Wampanoag Indians. This time of coming together gave birth to a new way of seeing and thinking that was not European, was not Native American, was a, a synthesis into something new. We have found the Indians very faithful in their covenant of peace with us very loving and ready to pleasure us. We often go to them, and they come to us. Some of us have been 50 miles by land in the country with them. What also became part of the United States Constitution was the great law of the Iroquois, the second great synthesis. And I have a little bracelet on here that represents the Hiawatha belt of the great law of the Iroquois. And that is the coming together of the, the five warring tribes under the tree of peace. And this tree of peace has white roots of peace that go out around the world, calling people into this higher way of thinking that the great law brought and, and that the great law brought into the concepts that are embodied in the Declaration of Independence and the United States Constitution. Iroquois chiefs were invited to the Declaration of Independence debates in Philadelphia in 1775. It was the Gilded Era, a time of robber barons, gold rushes, and manifest destiny. The American Indian had been subdued, many had been pushed west and relegated to reservations. The importance of the Native American in the evolution of American democracy and the American mind and spirit had been lost, as the European materialist mindset under the doctrine of discovery steamrolled across the continent. The principles and ideals articulated by Pilgrim and Puritan leaders Robinson and Winthrop, equal and just laws serving the common good, had become tools of dominance, separation, and ultimately world power. The angry voice of the American Indian began to be heard and felt deep within the American psyche. A wrong had been done. A culture had been decimated. The first Americans were ignored, feared, and deprived of their land and self-respect. Rather than liberty, equality, and justice, the corruption of the principles and ideals of the founders of New England and those of the Native Americans they encountered by money, power, and progress had prevailed and continues to prevail today. 
the United States has lost its self-respect and the respect of the world. We're making the sacrifice on behalf of those that don't have a voice. The silent nation, the animals and the trees and the land and the water. It is time to move forward. It is time to take the inspiration of the intercultural syntheses of the first 50 years of peace and friendship modeled by Plymouth Colony and the melding of the great law of the Iroquois into the Constitution to the next level. It is time to respect, honor, and understand the American Indian point of view and way of life. It is time to welcome the visionary Indian to the table through an open-hearted and open-minded invitation to sit in council together